Bonjour, in this episode I show you how to transform a photography into a drawing with pencil. Bonjour mesdames et messieurs, my name is Serge Ramelli, I'm a French photographer living in the beautiful city of Paris, France. I and I make two tutorials per week. Click here if you want to subscribe to my YouTube channel and get YouTube notification twice a week with free stuff. And click here if you want to get the action that I'm going to offer you for free as part of this tutorial and all the past raw files I've been doing for the last two years. We're talking hundreds of raw files. All you have to do is sign up to my newsletter and you will get to this goodies page and you'll get all the goodies, guys. All right, in last episode, I showed you how to take this photo. It's a frame in the frame technique where you have to make two exposures. It's a really cool trick to have. Check it out. This week, we're going to take this photo and transform it into a pencil type of drawing. That's the final result. It's pure Photoshop. It's slightly more complex than what I usually show you, but let me show you how I did this. All right, this week I just wanted to share a Photoshop trick that I learned at Photoshop World and I sort of improved it a little bit. And the whole idea is to turn a photo into like a pencil draw work art. And uh, I think it's a pretty cool trick. It's a bit more complex than usual, so uh, you know, I'm going to take it slow, and, but I'm also going to give you an action where you will be able to uh, do it like m almost automatically. So this is the photo of my daughter Marine and I want to turn it into a drawing. The first thing I do is I'm going to double click. So I just have a background layer. I'm going to double click on the lock here so that it's unlocked. It's not locked as a layer. Then I'm going to press Command J to duplicate the layer. So far, easy. Then I'm going to inverse the layer and put that inverse layer into color dodge. Now, when you do that, when you inverse the layer and you put it into color dodge, it's a special sort of algorithm, mathematical formula that's going to help us to do this pencil look. So don't try to understand the logic about it. You know, just know, you know, you have to invert the layer and go color dodge. Then that layer, I'm going to turn it into a smart object. The reason I'm turning it into a smart object is because I'm going to put a blur on it and I want to be able to change the blur because Depending on the resolution of your photo, you're going to have to change that value to have the look that is right. Okay, so once you've done that, mesdames et messieurs, uh, you add a little um, use saturation adjustment, and I'm going to desaturate everything a little bit, and uh, and I'm ready to go. So I'm going to right click. I'm, I'm taking back that layer, that layer that has been inverted and that has been that is color dodge mode. I'm going to go to filter, blur. Gaussian blur okay and I'm gonna go Gaussian blur of, of, on the first uh, on this one I'm gonna go around nine now that is a high res uh, file on your file you might need to go a bit different but you know that's the, the whole idea so nine is kind of cool I'm gonna click on okay then above this I'm gonna create another adjustment le le level sorry layers my god and I'm just going to bring the blacks. What the level is, is doing, when you do that, uh, you're just getting anything which is a bit gray, you're making it darker. And so now you're getting that look, that painting look, which is pretty cool. Okay, so that's the basic step. Now, uh, I want to show you a few things you can do to make it better. You could stop here and have fun, but I'm going to show you uh, a way to improve it. First thing, I'm going to select everything and press Command J to turn it into a group. So everything we've done so far is into one group. That group, mesdames and messieurs, and that only works, uh, you can duplicate groups easily, I think, from only Photoshop CS6. I'm gonna press Command J, and I'm gonna duplicate the group, right? So now I've got two groups with all the same things we've done so far. That second group, uh, let's call it shade, is only gonna be for the shade, it's just to improve the, the drawing. So shade, I'm going to put this into multiply and I'm going to go into the Gaussian blur that's here and instead of putting it at 9, I'm going to put it like around something like 30. Now again, you got to try different values for your photo, right? So, uh, alright, so there I am and now I'm just going to lower the opacity of uh, and put it around 20%. So. That's with shade, that's without shade. All I did is, you know, just added some shadows on the photo. Okay, and you can change, I mean, 
you can change the drawing, make it stronger. You can go back here on the levels here, you know, and just make it a bit stronger. Do, you know, like you want. Now, two cool things I want to show you. Once you've done that, uh, you can do two cool things. First, you got, you got a, a bit of grainy stuff going on here in the background. That's not very nice. So if you want to improve that, what you can do is add another level on top of it. And uh, you're going to go reverse on the levels. What you, you want to, what you want to do is go there until all the grainy stuff that you don't like is out of the way, right? So you, that, that's too strong. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the, on the mask that's here. And I'm going to invert it by pressing common eye. Now the mask is becoming black. So now with a brush, with a little brush that I have here, I can uh, make sure that the brush is around like 20, 30% and that white is your foreground color. I can bring back some of the levels that's here just to you know, get out all the junk you don't want in the photo. And you can actually go even on the skin, you know, if you think that the skin is a bit too much and you just can improve your, your drawing uh, by, you know, adding some white, basically, that's all we're doing. And, and as usual, because it's an adjustment, if you think you went too much, for example, here on the hairs, you can press X and just bring it back again by bringing back some black. So it's just a way to improve the, um, the drawing and make it more like, you know, if you want to get it perfect. Okay, and one little cool trick I want to show you. If you take back the final image, you press Command J and put that layer on top of everything you've done so far. Now I can just add a mask on this one and now I can mix both of the looks. I can just take a gradient here. Uh, let's make it black to white and, uh, and do something like that. This way her face is in drawing and, uh, and the rest is not. Or you press Command I to go the other way. You know, her face is not in drawing and, and her clothes is in drawing. So that's a cool effect. Now, if you follow my podcast, I will give you an, an action for free so you don't have to redo this step. All you have to do is double click on the action file I'm going to give you. And you can do that because you went to my website. Website, you have this here on the right corner. You can subscribe to my newsletter or you can go to news and click sign up and subscribe. Now, if you're already subscribed to my newsletter, it will, it will give you again uh, the access to this page. That what I call the goodies page. The goodies page is over a hundred raw files from all over the world or actions. For example, well, it says one to one, but you will see soon one to two. You can click on direct download and you can download the action. Then you just unzip it, double click on it. Once you've double click on it, it's only going to work if you're Photoshop CC or Photoshop CS6. But once you have the, uh, the, the action installed, you can take another photo and just go into the actions, which is here. The action is called draw and you just click play. And what it's going to do is it's going to do all these steps that I've just shown you in a split of a second. And, but again, depending on the resolution of your photo, you, you're going to have to play around with the blur settings. So let me show that to you. It's, and what's taking the most time in this type of action is creating the smart objects because smart object technology is a bit time consuming. So I'm just going to put it on pause. It's going to take probably 10 seconds to finish. You got your drawing. So now you can, you can just go and, uh, it, the first group, remember there is two groups. You got group one and group two. Group one is the basic drawing look and group two is the shading. So you can see if you click here, that's the shading. It just, you know, it just adds a little bit more shadows. Uh, so if you want the shadings to be stronger, you can put more opacity on this one. And uh, you can just also click here on the Gaussian Blur on the first one and play around and, you know, see what's going to give you the best result. And you can also, you know, do the two things I showed you. Take that layer, put it on top, make a mask. You can create a level layer to... Uh, make your drawing a bit nicer. So I just, I thought I would share this to you. I think it's a really cool effect and you can do that with some portraits and the people are going to love it. All right. So let's get back to me. All right, guys, I hope you liked it. And it's a really cool trick and uh, you can make very nice graphic and design with this. Mesdames et messieurs, I will see you in the next episode. Au revoir.